All right, guys. Good to see y'all. We're going to start the test review for our test over special segments of a triangle. I'm going to be working through this pretty quickly. Obviously, it's a video, so you can fast forward, rewind, pause, whatever you need to do. But there's a lot of questions on this assignment, so I'm going to talk and move quickly. Um, let's get at it. First picture here is we know we have mid-segment. These are two midpoints on each side, and a segment that connects two midpoints is called a mid-segment. So we know two things. We know that the mid-segment is half the size of its base, and we know that the mid-segment is parallel to its base. So focusing on the parallel aspect, we know that these two lines are parallel. So if that's 40 degrees, this angle would be a corresponding angle clocking in at 40 degrees. We have 80 and 40. That would make the, this angle 60 degrees. Why is that? Because that would be three angles of a triangle. So we know that x equals 60 degrees on this one. Secondly, we know that it takes two mid-segments, right? If a mid-segment is half the size of its base, then two times the mid-segment would equal its base. So we can solve that situation. So 10w minus 20, don't forget to distribute, equals 2w plus 40. 8w equals 60. Um, that'd be 60 divided by 2 would be 30. 30 divided by 4 would be 7.5 or 15 halves. It does say no decimals, so make sure you type it in as the fraction. All right, next question. This is a hinge theorem. This is the new stuff. They share this side. In order for hinge theorem, you have to have two sets, or you have to have two triangles that have the same two side lengths. So these sides match, and they share this one. So they have two sides that match. And we know that the bigger third side must come from the bigger included angle. So we know that 3x plus 10 must be bigger than 5x minus 22. Well, that means 2x must be less than 32. That means x must be less than 16. And I switched the sides there. And if I switch the sides, I have to flip the sign. So be careful. I moved x to the left side and 16 to the right. I flipped the signs. I flipped sides, so I flipped signs. Now, this is where these get kind of tricky. We have to consider that x cannot just be smaller forever. For instance, like what is 5 times 0 minus 22? Well, that doesn't work. That's negative 22. So if we say x is less than 16 and we stop there, we're incorrect because it cannot be less than 16 forever. So real quick notes for angles. For angles, we have a natural lower at 0 and a natural upper at 180 if they're angles of a triangle. Since we've already got a, an upper limit, right, less than 16, we already have the upper accounted for, we need to figure out the lower limit. Well, which angle would hit the lower limit first? We've talked about this in, before, but the smaller angle would be gone first. As x gets smaller and smaller and smaller, 5x minus 22 would hit 0 first. So I've got to make sure that 5x minus 22 never hits 0. So 5x minus 22 has to be greater than 0. So x has to be greater than 22 fifths. So that is my lower limit, right? That's like 4.4. Like if you plug in 4, for instance, what's 5 times 4? That's 20 minus 22. At 4, it still doesn't exist, guys. So our lower limit is when the smaller side would disappear. So we have to do everything we can to make sure that the smaller side doesn't disappear. Um, we gotta know how to do these questions for sure. Frozen, let's see here, three snack carts, A, B, and C outside the city. Each of the three carts is the same distance from the distributor. Um, so what is the point of concurrency? Well, if it's three points, it's gonna be a circumcenter. And the next one is three sidewalks make a triangle. The edge of the sidewalks, those would be like lines. Equidistant from three lines or three sides is the end center. All right. Vertices. Circa means it's a circle around the triangle. It's a circle that hits the vertices of the triangle. End center, inside, equidistant from the sides. All right, list the segments in order from smallest to biggest. Well, first, we've talked about this, but you cannot compare angles 
Like you can't do this between two different triangles. But within the confines of a single triangle, we can. So I'm going to focus on the green triangle and the blue triangle. Well, the blue triangle has angles of 90 and 30, so this corner would be 60. Just working on the blue triangle, we know the side, of, we're going, what are we doing? We're doing smallest to longest. So the smallest side is across from the smallest angle. So 30 is the smallest angle. That means that NE has to be the smallest side. The next, we're going small to big, yeah. And then the next one would be 60. 60 is the middle one. It opens up to NO. And the 90 is the biggest one. It opens up to OE. So we do smallest to biggest on the blue triangle. Now I'm going to do smallest to biggest on the black triangle. Well, they mark these angles equal. So if that's 60, this angle is going to be 60. And then 160, there'd be 20 degrees left over. So once again, small to big, the smallest of the black triangle would be NL. The middle of the black triangle would be EL. And the longest would be NE. Now, once you've done this, we can see that these link up where NE is basically in the middle of the two. Um, we know from the black triangle that NE is bigger than these two. We know from the blue triangle that NE is smaller than those two. So this has to be the overall order, right? These two sides are definitely, sorry, I said that backwards. These two sides are smaller. These two sides are definitely smaller than those two sides. NE is right in the middle. All right, write the equation of the line. It's an altitude. So if I draw just a makeshift picture here and I call it um, triangle ABC are the three coordinates. Well, if it's called altitude DA, that means it has to go through vertex A, which means it's perpendicular to the side BC. So what do we know? We know points B and C, but there's no way for us to know where point D is. Like, we're not going to find point D. I guess there's a way to do it, but we're not doing that. Um, so what we're going to do is find the slope of BC. And what can we do with the slope of BC? We can make it perpendicular. So the slope, remember that slope is y2 minus y1. It's the rise over x2 minus x1, the run. So let's get the slope of BC. That'd be negative 3 minus negative 11 over negative 2 minus negative 6. Remember, minus a negative is a plus. So that'd be 11 minus 3 is 8. 6 minus 2 is 4. That is 2. Well, we want the perpendicular slope, negative 1 half. These lines form a right angle, so we know they're perpendicular. So the equation I'm trying to write is for AD. So I'm going to use this slope. Okay, so then we're going to do y equals mx plus b. And remember, it's called AD. We're going to use the coordinate 10, 1. So x equals 10, y equals 1, and our slope is negative 1 half. Those are the things that we know. So we're going to plug those things in. y equals 1, m equals negative 1 half, x equals 10. So 1, that'd be negative 5 plus b. So 6 equals b. So my final equation is going to be y equals negative 1 half x plus 6. So med uh, this is an altitude. Sorry, I almost said median. Altitudes are perpendicular to the opposite side. So you get the slope of the opposite side and make it perpendicular. Then you use the point that you know, which in this case was point A, and you plug it into the equation y equals mx plus b. All right, we talked about this last time for sure. What is the rule? The rule is that a plus b must be bigger than c. So we'll do the first one here. 3 plus 3 equals 6. Is 6 bigger than 6? No. Number 2, 3 plus 3 equals 6. Is, three, is 6 bigger than 3? Yes. Number 3, 2.5 plus 3.5 equals 6. Is 6 bigger than 6? No. And number 4, 21 plus 91 
is 112. Is 112 bigger than 100? Yes. No, yes, no, yes. All right, we got hinge theorem going on. This is a high-level question. So I'm going to do the whole problem. Hopefully it makes sense. First, we're going to do the hinge theorem part. Two sides are matched, right? 84 matches 84, 50 matches 50. So the smaller included angle, 7x plus 25, is the smaller third side. So we know that 7x plus 25 must be smaller than 10x plus 4. Um, so 3x would be greater than 21. So x would be greater than 7. Actually, I'm going to leave it like that. X would be greater than 7. So that's phase 1. Phase 1, get you use hinge theorem to get either your upper or lower limit. Let's take a second to do some notes, though. For sides, the lower limit by default is 0, and the upper limit by default is infinity. Because we have a lower limit, we don't care about the lower one. But I need to make, but there can be adjusted limits. Adjusted limits is if we know more. Ah! All right. So what do I mean? The new lower would be B minus A, and the new upper would be B plus A, where those are the sides of the triangle. Well, we know that the sides of the triangle are 84 and 50. This one's a tough question. Most people struggle with this. But we know that 84 minus 50 equals 34. We know that 84 plus 50 equals 134. That means for this problem, we care about these adjusted limits. Right? And we've talked about this before. Like if I gave you two sides and said, hey, I got these two sides. The sides are 7 and 5. And I want to know what are the values of the third side, what are the range of values for the third side. Remember, you would subtract. It would be 2 and 12. You would add and subtract the two numbers. You would know that the third side had to be between 2 and 12. If you don't know these sides, the, the, the rule is just x has to exist and it has to be less than, like, it just has to be less than infinity. Right, so x just has to be greater than zero. This is the natural limits. These are the adjusted limits if you know that you have side lengths of seven and five. Well, here we know we have side lengths of 84 and 50. So we know that the new lower and new upper are 34 and 134, and that overrides the natural limits. Well, we have a lower limit, so I don't care about this one either. I just need my biggest side to be smaller than my upper limit. I cannot have a side length of 134, right? Like what is 84? If, if, let's say that this side was 134, and I said, is it a triangle? 84, 50, and 134, is that a triangle? 84 plus 50 is 134. Is 134 greater than 134? No. So that can't be what we do. We can't do it that way. It cannot, be it cannot be 134. So we know that the bigger side would hit the upper limit first. So we know that 10x plus 4 must stay smaller than 134. It must. So 10x must be less than 130. x must be less than 13. And this is the overall answer. Okay, we're going to do some other ones like this later without the adjusted limits. The adjusted limits are definitely the hardest part of this problem. All right. Here, I probably should have done this question first. If I have sides of 4 and 3, we do 4 minus 3 to get the 1, and we do 4 plus 3 to get the 7. We know that the third side must be between 1 and 7. Um, right? Like if I said 4, 3, 1, is that a triangle? No. 1 plus 3 is 4. That doesn't work. If I said 4, 3, 7, is that a triangle? No. 4 plus 3 is 7. That doesn't work. Would any number between 1 and 7 work? Yes. All right. So this question, I'm going to call this A, B, and C. I don't care what they're actually called. I'm just going to call them that, okay? And so here's, here's the situation here, guys, is you have to pretend that any of these sides is the biggest side. We don't know which one is biggest. These are all unknown numbers. So first, I'm going to pretend C is the biggest one. So I'm going to do A plus B and make it bigger than C. 
So if that was the case, we would know that 4x minus 2 plus 7x minus 10 has to be bigger than x plus 20. That's pretending c is the longest side. So this would be 11x minus 12 is greater than x plus 20. Um, so that'd be 10x is greater than 32. So x has to be greater than 16 fifths. So according to this situation, x must be more than 16 fifths. But we have two more situations that we have to account for. It is possible that a plus c it's, sorry, it's possible that B is the biggest side, and if B is the biggest side, then A plus C would have to be more than B. So I'm going to say 4X minus 2 plus X plus 20, A plus C, has to be more than 7X minus 10. So 5X plus 18 has to be more than 7X minus 10. So 2X has to be less than 28. So X has to be less than 14. So in order for this to be true, x cannot be 14, x cannot be more than 14. All right, we've got one more situation to consider. Maybe, just maybe, b plus c is bigger than a. Maybe a is the biggest side. That would be 7x minus 10 plus x plus 20 has to be more than 4x minus 2. So 8x plus 10 has to be more than 4x minus 2. So 4x has to be more than negative 12. x has to be more than negative 3. Okay. So we know we have to be less than 14, but here's where people run into issues, right? Is like, which one of these do you pick? So the way I kind of explain it is, let's say that I'm, I'm someone who jumps over things, right? Whoop! And I have a bar at... Um, what are my numbers? At negative 3, and I have a bar at 16 fifths. Well, if I'm going to run and jump over this, which one do I have to actually jump over? If I just jump over negative 3, it's possible that I still hit the other bar. So if my goal is to jump over both of these heights, which one do I have to actually jump over? Just the tallest one. If I can clear this one, I actually clear both of them. So I only have to clear this one to account for both of these. Another way of saying it, guys, is like this number is, what, 3.2? If I'm bigger than 3.2, I'm already bigger than negative 3. So I don't have to worry about the negative 3. But if I was bigger than negative 3, is it possible I'm still smaller than 3.2? Yes. Like the number 0, for instance. The number zero clears this, but doesn't clear that. So I need, I need them to both be true no matter what. And the only way for that to happen is to clear both of the, them. To clear, and that had to be 16 fifths. And then, of course, it had to be less than 14. Um, let's do this game real quick. What if I know x had to be greater than 2, x has to be greater than 5, and x has to be less than 11? So what would, if this was the situation, what would be the end goal? I would have to be more than 5, but less than 11. Why? 5 is already more than 2. So if I am more than 5, can I safely say I'm bigger than 2? Yes. But if I said, hey, if I put a 2 here, um, isn't, isn't 3 more than 2? Is 3 more than 5? No. So no, I can't say more than 2. If I say I'm bigger than 2, can I safely say I'm bigger than 5? No. So this would be the answer if that was my situation. So you, you have to figure that out. All right, we're going to move on. Hinge theorem again. We have two sides matching two sides. So the bigger third side, 10x plus 14, the angle, has to make the bigger angle. So 10x plus 14, since 4 is bigger than 3, 10x plus 14 is going to be bigger than 7x plus 44. So 3x is going to be bigger than 30. x must be bigger than 10. Well, that's a lower limit. So remember for angles, the lower is 0, the upper is 180. So if I have the lower one, ignore the lower one, I need to get the upper limit. That means the bigger angle, 10x plus 14, has to stay smaller than 180. 
because the moment it's 180 degrees, right? Like if I have a situation, if it's 180 degrees, like that's just a line. That's not a triangle anymore, right? But even if it's just a little bit less than 180, wouldn't that be a triangle that you could make? Yes. So we must stay less than 180. So 10x must be less than 166. So x must be less than, divide by 2 would be 83. So 83 fifths. And that would be my overall answer is I must be less than 83 fifths while being more than 10 to make that situation work. All right. X, Y, and Z are midpoints, so like these two parts are equal, these two parts are equal, these two parts are equal. If those are midpoints, um, what that means is that we have mid-segments. So like this mid-segment would be parallel and half of this side. That means it also gets a three dash. Um, this mid-segment would be parallel and half of this side. And then finally, this mid-segment would be parallel and half of this side. So knowing which pieces are congruent is really, really important. So if they give us YZ, YZ is this green line, wouldn't this have to be exactly half of MN? So it takes 2 times YZ to equal 1 MN. The mid-segment is half its base. YZ is half of MN. That's the setup here. So 6X plus 2 has to equal 10X minus 6. So 4X has to equal 8. X has to equal 2. But they ask us how long is YZ. So plug in 2, that'd be 6 plus 1. So YZ would equal 7. For the angle, if angle MON, that's this angle here, if that's 48 degrees... Um, we know a few other ones, like this purple is parallel to purple. This is going to be 48. This orange is parallel to this orange. This is going to be 48. What are they asking for? MZX. MZX. They're asking for this 48 right there. All right. So here we have a triangle. I'm going to go ahead and draw just a generic triangle so we have something to see. If it's called DEF. Um, DE is X plus 4, DF is 3X minus 1, and EF is 3X plus 4. And they gave us a perimeter. Without the perimeter, we couldn't do anything. But we know that the three sides, X plus 4, 3X plus 4, and 3X minus 1 have to equal 35. Right? To find the perimeter, you add up all the sides. So 3, 6, 7, x, 4, 8, 7 has to equal 35. So 7x has to equal 28. x has to be 4. But we're trying to list the angles in order from biggest to smallest. So if I plug in 4, this would be 8. 12 minus 1 would be 11. 12 plus 4 would be 16. So those are the three side links. Well, the biggest angle would be across from the biggest side. So if the biggest side is 16, then angle D is the biggest angle. And the smallest side is 8. So angle F is the smallest, which means angle E is the middle. So the biggest side makes the biggest angle. The middle side makes the middle angle. And the smallest side makes the smallest angle. Let's go. More hinge theorem. We have sides that match. We know that angle A is 76 degrees and angle D is 77 degrees. BC is 5x plus 10 and EF is 3x plus 22. Well, the smaller angle, 5x plus 10, sorry, the smaller angle produces the smaller third side. So we know 5x plus 10 is smaller than 3x plus 22 because 76 is smaller than 77. So 2x is smaller than 12, x is smaller than 6. That is an upper boundary. We're talking about side lengths. So the natural boundaries for sides are 0 and infinity. Now sides you have to adjust sometimes. Do we have to adjust these limits? The answer is no. We do not know any of these side lengths, so we can't make any adjusted limits. 
So we're going to, we're going to ignore the upper because we already have an upper. We're going to use zero as our lower. Well, which side would hit zero first? And that would be the smaller side. So we know that 5x plus 10 must be bigger than zero. 5x must be bigger than negative 10. x must be bigger than negative 2. And there's our answer, negative 2. Boop. So the smaller side would disappear first. We talked about that on the last one we did like this. All right, we have angle U is this. Angle E is this. 9, ma nine matches 9 and 9, so they have the same two sides touching them. So the smaller third side would produce the smaller angle. That means that 5x minus 78 is smaller than 3x minus 7. The smaller third side would come from the smaller angle. So 2x must be smaller than 71. x must be smaller than 71 halves. So these are this time these are angles. What are the natural limits for angles? They're 0 and 180. Well, we're already smaller than 71 halves, so we don't have to worry about the upper limit, but we do have to worry about the lower limit. The smaller angle, E, would hit the lower limit first. As they get smaller, the smaller angle would disappear first. So we have to make sure that the smaller angle, 5x minus 78, never disappears, which means it must be more than 0. So 5x must be more than 78. x must be more than 78 fifths. Otherwise, it doesn't exist. Sometimes always never questions. Some of the stuff that you have to know to even start the question is what we've talked about before. If a triangle is equilateral, then this the, the spot where the, all the lines hit is all four points at the same time. That's a centroid, an orthocenter, a circumcenter, and an incenter. So an equilateral triangle kind of busts some of our things up, guys. When it's equilateral, that one point is everything. So like the circumcenter is usually equi is, is always equidistant from the vertices. On an equilateral triangle, though, it's equidistant from the vertices, but it's also equidistant from the sides. It's the center of gravity. Um, the end center is usually just this equidistant from the sides. Well, right now, it's equidistant from the vertices. It's the center of gravity. Every point has all the properties right now. An end center is usually the intersection of, an, of altitudes. Well, right now, we could say that the end center is the intersection of medians. So this kind of busts things up. And then on an isosceles triangle, like the, the, the vertex angle, this one line is all four of them, right? So when it's isosceles, if you have an altitude, angle, bisector, um, perpendicular, bisector, and median, on an isosceles triangle, all four of these are the same line from the vertex angle. So like this one line, if it's isosceles, represents all four of them. All right, so going up here, altitudes intersect at the centroid. Well, I'm going to make all of these in always just so we know. Altitudes intersect at the ortho center. So that means they sometimes hit at a centroid when it's equilateral. So when is this true? When it's equilateral, this is true. Medians have a point of concurrency inside the triangle. Well, medians meet, what is their point of concurrency? It's a centroid, and that is always inside the triangle. In an obtuse triangle, the orthocenter is equidistant from the vertices. Um, well, an obtuse triangle means one of your angles is more than 90. When is the orthocenter equidistant from the vertices? When it's equilateral. So what we're basically saying here is an, an obtuse triangle is equilateral, and that is never true. Um, to make this an always statement, what is always equidistant from the vertices? That would be the circumcenter is always equidistant from the vertices. In a right triangle, all medians are angle bisectors. All medians are angle bisectors only if it's equilateral. So in this situation, it's true. But over here, like this median would not be an angle bisector. Only the one from the vertex angle. But because it says all, that must be an equilateral triangle. 
So a right triangle is equilateral? No. In an isosceles triangle, all medians are angle bisectors. Well, once again, this only happens if it's equilateral. So is an isosceles triangle equilateral? Sometimes it is. Remember, equilateral is a type of isosceles triangle. And then the center of gravity is the circumcenter. When it's equilateral, yes. So that is sometimes overall. The center of gravity is always the centroid. All right. More hinge theorem. All right, we have a shared side. The smaller angle produces the smaller side. So 4x plus 3 is smaller than 12x minus 13. So 8x is bigger than 16. x is bigger. Why do I switch sides? x is bigger than 2. And the, so once you have the lower boundary, this is where it gets tricky. You have to consider other boundaries. Sides, these are sides, have boundaries of 0 and infinity. <clears throat> Well, we already have the lower boundary, so don't worry about zero. And there's no more information. So the upper boundary is just limitless. Like it just could go bigger forever. You're always going to be less than infinity. So all we had to do is be bigger than two. On the other question, remember we had an adjusted limit. Like if this was like 12 and this was like 14, well, now the adjusted limits, I'm just making this up. But if this was the case, the adjusted limits you subtract would be 2, and you add would be 26. If that was 12 and 14, you would have to make sure that the bigger side is less than 26 because we know that upper limit is 26 in that case. But that didn't happen here, so it's just greater than 2 forever. We don't have an upper limit. All right. I kind of have the answers here already, but what would be the same distance from three locations? Circumcenter. What would be the same distance from three sides? In center. I'm going to go quickly once again. We've done this. This angle would be 70 degrees. We're going to focus on this purple triangle first. So the left side first. We're going to go from shortest to longest. 30 is the smallest, so this would be the smallest side, A, B. The middle side, 70, would go to AD. And the biggest side is across from 80. That would be BD. Then we do the other triangle. So the blue triangle over here, 70 and 50. This angle would be 60. The smallest would be across from 50. That would be BD. The next smallest across from 60 would be BC. And then the biggest across from 70 would be DC. And if we see, they both have BD. Oop. Since they both have BD, we know that, that the two smallest sides have to come from the purple triangle, and then the two bigger sides have to come from the blue triangle. So we know that's the overall order from small to big. Here I give you two sides. Can you give me the range of values for the third side? And you just do 10 minus 5, 10 plus 5. You do 11 minus 3, 11 plus 3. You do 2 minus 2, 2 plus 2, and we get those range of values for the third side. It can't be equal to those, right? Like, let's say it was 8. 3, 11, and 8. Does that make a triangle? No. 8 plus 3 is 11. 11 is not bigger than 11. So, no, it can't be exactly 8. Could it be 8.01? Yes. Could it be 9? Yes. Could it be 14? No, because now that goes out the other side. So, 8 to 14, bigger than 8, but less than 14, for example, on that one. All right, so let's see. We've had this question on the quiz. We've had this on several quizzes, actually. First, is it isosceles, equilateral, or scalene? We have to do distance. We're going to do three of them, right? We have a triangle called ABC, and I need the distance for each one. Remember that distance is basically Pythagorean theorem. If I focus just on those two points, remember they would make a right triangle, where delta x and delta y would be like your a and your b, right? Um, and how do you move left and right? Like that's our x's. So for we're going to do each one of these. I'll do the work down here from a to b, which is the square root of, it's Pythagorean theorem. How far over do you go? 1 to negative 3. You've moved 4 units. You square it. 
negative 2 to 0, you've moved 2 units you squared. So like on our triangle, it's like you're moving over 4, up 2. Over 4, up 2, you would do Pythagorean theorem, right? You would do 2 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. This would be like your C. And then how do you undo that square? You do the square root. Like this is where it's coming from. So we know that this would be the square root of 20. I'm going to do the other two real quick. We're going to go from A to C. Same thing. AC would be 1 to 3 is 2. We square it. Negative 2 to 5 is 7. We square it. That's 4 plus 49. That'd be the square root of 53. And then lastly, we'd have to do from B to C. B to C would be negative 3 to 3 would be 6. And then 0 to 5 would be 5. And that'd be 36 plus 25, 36, 56, 61. So those are all three different at scalene. Now, the biggest one would be root 61, right? Isn't that on BC? BC is root 61, so the big... Oh, they want the smallest one. Okay, I was about to say. Um, the smallest one would be root 20. That'd be on AB. So angle C is across from the smallest side. So the smallest side always produces the smallest angle, in this case, angle C. Scalene angle C. All right, a lot of work on these, so stay with me, guys. First, we need a visual. So if I draw a triangle, it's called ABC once again. We need to find the slope of median BX. So BX, if it's a median, would hit a midpoint. To get the slope, remember slope, you need two points. I need to get the midpoint. X is going to equal A plus C divided by 2. So uh, let me do that real quick. So A plus C would be, look at these coordinates for A and C. This is where I'm looking. These are my X's with my X's, my Y's with my Y's. 2 plus 3 divided by 2, comma, negative 3 plus negative 11 divided by 2. Well, that's 5 divided by 2, comma, negative 14 divided by 2 would be negative 7. So this is my point x. So then the slope of bx would be, basically, we do b minus x on top and on bottom. We do y is on top, x is on bottom. So I'm focusing on point b now. That would be 4 minus negative 7 on top and 5 minus 5 halves on bottom. And that might be a little funky. we got fractions inside of fractions. But we can handle this. This would become a plus. That would be 11. 5 minus 5 halves would be 10 halves minus 5 halves, which is also 5 halves. And division is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. And if you don't know that, that's okay, but this would be 22 fifths. That would cancel out, right? If we multiply the top and bottom by 2 fifths, the bottom cancels out. And so we're left with 22 fifths. For now, you could just type this in your calculator. I'll let you have the calculator for ones like this. But you eventually, we're going to get really good at doing this. So we got the slope is 22 fifths. Then we have to write the equation. So the equation is y equals mx plus b. And we can use B or X, but I'm going to use B. I'm going to make this my X and this my Y. So that's going to be 4. My slope is 22 fifths. My X is 5. Nice. So when I multiply that, the 5s just cancel out. So 4 equals 22 plus B. B would equal negative 18. And so Y equals 22 fifths X minus 18. All right, then we're going to do the, the altitude CD. So let's go back over here. If it's called altitude CD, that means it starts at C and it's perpendicular to C, the side AB. We did this, we've done this stuff before, guys. I cannot get point D. Like, I guess we could, but, like, but not really. But I need to get the slope of AB. Why? Because ours is going to be perpendicular to that. So the slope of AB, let's do that real quick, would be negative 11 minus negative 3 over 3 minus 2. And that would be, make that a plus, that would be negative 
8 over 1 or negative 8. I messed up. Where did I mess up? Oh, I did the slope of AC. I did AC. I did AC. Abort, 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 abort. We're doing AB. So we're doing A to B. That'd be 4 minus negative 3 over 5 minus 2. And that would be 7 thirds. But we want the perpendicular slope, which would be negative 3 sevenths. So to do an altitude, you must find the slope of the line that it hits and make it perpendicular. We've done this before. So now we're going to write the equation. Y equals mx plus b. We're, we know it has to go through point C. Now we're going to use point C because it's called CD. We don't know where D is, so we have to use point C. So we plug in negative 11. Our slope is negative 3 sevenths. X equals 3 plus B. So negative 11 would equal negative 9 over 7 plus B. Add 9 over 7. So this would be like negative 77 over 7 plus 9 over 7 would be negative 68 over 7. And then we get our answer here. All right, moving along. A right triangle has its orthocenter at the right angle. Yes. Yes, we've talked about that. On a right triangle, the legs are already perpendicular. So, like, here's an altitude. Here's an altitude. Where do they hit? They hit on the right angle. Yes. In an isosceles triangle, the median cutting through the vertex angle is an altitude. The median cutting through the vertex angle is an altitude. Yes, remember all four lines occur from the vertex angle. The circumcenter is outside the triangle. Yes, when it's obtuse. In an equiangular triangle, the centroid is equidistant from the sides. Yes, if it's equiangular, then it's equilateral. And if it's equilateral, all four points are the same point. An acute triangle has four points of currency outside. No, there's two points of concurrency that never leave the triangle. The end center is the center of gravity. When it's equilateral, it is. When it's equilateral, all the properties happen. So that's sometimes. If AC is a perpendicular bisector, so it hits a, at a right angle, it cuts it in half. Now look at this. If a perpendicular bisector goes through a vertex, then it's also a median. It's also an altitude. It's everything. So we have medians, altitudes, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors. If we know it's all of these, then we know it's an isosceles triangle. So we know that these two sides must be equal. We know that AB must be 2x plus 10. We know that AD must be 3x minus 15. They told us that. And we know that 2x plus 10 has to equal 3x minus 15. So x equals 25 in this problem. They told us that BC is 2x plus 5. That means this would be 2x plus 5. When you plug in 25, you would get 55 for each part. So how long is the entire thing? The entire thing would have to be 110. And I don't know how much of the announcements you guys can hear, so I'm sorry about that. Um, but hopefully you, you can understand what's going on. Basically, we have a perpendicular bisector that goes through a vertex. That means it's also a median. It's also an altitude. That means it's everything. That means it's an isosceles triangle. So I know that those two sides, AB and AD, had to be equal. I said I'm equal, I saw for X. I know, that, and that's how I got the whole problem going. All right, last two are both hinge theorem questions. I'm going to do both of them quickly, and then we're going to be done. All right, smaller included angle produces a smaller third side. 7X minus 16 has to be smaller than 5X minus 10. So 2X has to be smaller than 6. X has to be smaller than 3. These are side lengths. And we do know two sides, 13 and 10. So the, the normal boundaries are 0 to infinity, but these are out. Because those sides are 13 and 10, 13 minus 10 is 3. 13 plus 10 is 13. 
So we know that the smaller side, 7x minus 16, has to be bigger than the lower boundary, 3. Right? Why do I know? Sorry, I skipped this little step here. This is an upper boundary. We need to consider the lower boundary. If we have the upper boundary, then we're all done over here. We don't care about any of that. But we know that our third side has to be bigger than 3 because of our adjusted boundaries of 3 to 13. Right? If I just gave you a triangle and said the sides are 13 and 10 and said what are the range of values for the third side, wouldn't you say that x has to be more than 3 and less than 23? Oop, that'd be 23. Is that what? Uh-oh. 13 plus 10, that'd be 23. That'd be 23. That'd be 23. That'd be 23. Either way, we're, we don't care about it. So this is the range of values for this triangle in general. And we know that the smaller side would disappear first. So the smaller side, 7x minus 16, has to be bigger than 3. So 7x has to be bigger than 19. x has to be bigger than 19 over 7 on this question. This is all because we knew two of the sides. Same situation. All I did was switch the 60 and the 80. So now the smaller one is 5x minus 10, and that's smaller than 7x minus 16. So 2x is more than 6. x is more than 3. So now we have a lower boundary. So the same idea. We know sides are 10 and 13, so we know 10 minus 13. Oh, 13 minus 10 is 3. Oh my goodness, I can't write. Is 3. And 13 plus 10 is 23. Because we already have the lower boundary, we don't care about this. But the bigger side, the bigger side would hit the upper boundary first. So we need to do an adjusted boundary of 23. We need to make sure that 7x minus 16 is less than 23 right? This is the bigger one now. So 7x minus 16 has to be less than 23. 7x has to be less than 39. x has to be less than 39 over 7. So less than 39 over 7 is the final answer there. Last question. All right, so there's a lot going on here. It says my friend M-Dub is trying to tell me that AD equals 10 is a possibility in the figure below. Is he right? All right, so here's what I see. I see an angle bisector and an altitude. That means that this is an isosceles triangle. That means that this is a median. Um, and I see a right triangle. Do you see this right triangle, guys? This red right triangle? So I know that I have to do the square root of 25 squared minus 15 squared, and I'm going to get 20 for this third side. So that's a Pythagorean theorem. So I just did a lot of stuff real fast. Remember that if you have your list of things, altitude, angle bisector, median, and perpendicular bisector, and then the fifth thing is isosceles, trapezo uh, tri uh, isosceles triangle. Well, we had an angle bisector. They told us that. We had an altitude. They told us that. If it's any two of these, it must be all of these. So that's how I knew it was also a median. That's how I knew that it was also an isosceles triangle. That's how I knew all these things. So and it, that means that those two pieces have to be 20. So let's focus on just this triangle, just this triangle. That triangle has sides of 40 and 30. So what are the range of values for the third side? Well, 40 minus 30 is 10. 40 plus 30 is 70. We know that that third side has to be more than 10, not equal to 10. So the answer is no. All right, that was a really fun, really fun review, guys. Uh, don't forget that the test does have questions that were like the ones on the quiz as well. You need to know how to use altitudes, angle bisectors, perpendicular bisectors, and medians, and all of those to solve questions as well. So don't forget that. <laughs>